Today we're going to be looking at the photoelectric effect. Shining light onto a metal surface can cause electrons to be emitted under the right conditions. Einstein looked, at, looked into and, and, uh, and worked with this effect and he found that whilst he was experimenting with this effect, the results he got don't, do not agree with the classical wave model for light. There were four main points, four main points that, that do not agree uh, with light in this instance coming in um, to, the, to the metal surface, interacting with the metal surface as a wave and then releasing, releasing uh, electrons. So the electrons are emitted immediately, that's the first point. In, if, if it was a wave coming in, it would take time for the intensity, the energy to build up within the metal before the electrons were released. Secondly, increasing the intensity, so that's the, the amplitude of the incident light, affects the number of electrons ejected, but not the energy. It, it was expected that uh, light, if light is a wave, having a greater amplitude would have a greater energy, a greater intensity, have a greater energy, and would impart that greater energy to the electrons. So the electrons would be ejected, and they would have a greater energy with that greater intensity. But that was, wasn't the case. We saw more electrons being ejected, more electrons being ejected through uh, uh, this increase in intensity, um, but not their energy. Their energy was not affected by that intensity. Number three, the electrons required a certain frequency of incident light before they, or, or greater before they were ejected. If, if they didn't have that amount, wave theory said, or the, the wave theory of light says that the energy should build up in the metal so that uh, after a certain amount of time the electron should be ejected. And that wasn't the case. The, the metal required a certain frequency or greater before those electrons started to be ejected. And the last point is that the energy of the electrons depended on the frequency of the incident light. The, the greater the frequency of that light, the greater the frequency of the light coming in, the greater the energy of those electrons were ejected. Uh, it was thought that, that the, the changing the frequency of the light would not affect, would not affect those, um, those electrons that were ejected. So this is what is sort of going on in this, in this um, situation. It is a quantum situation. The packets of light are, are coming in. They don't need to build up. The one packet of light can be imparted to an electron. And if that one packet has enough energy to, to impart to an electron, that electron will escape the metal and will be ejected out. Uh, electrons that are, are ejected in this way are termed photoelectrons. The, the only, the only different, there's no difference between a photoelectron and an electron. A photoelectron is just an electron that's ejected through this effect, through the photoelectric effect. So if we have a look here, um, if we have a look at the incident radiation coming into um, a, a, the surface of a metal here um, with an, a loosely bound electron in it, this is, this is not what actually it actually looks like, it's not what, it actually, what actually occurs, but it's a good analogy for what uh, happens for um, when a, and some incident radiation comes in, um, a, a quantum of radiation, a packet of radiation, a photon uh, comes in and strikes the, a metal surface and, and allows the photoelectric effect to happen to occur. There are three different scenarios that could possibly occur uh, once this radiation comes in, once this, um, this packet, this photon of information of, of radiation comes in. So if the, if the energy, the incident energy, the energy coming in is less than the energy required to, to, to remove the electron, to liberate the electron, uh, then the, the electron won't be liberated It'll be moved around the metal, the, some of the energy will, will be imparted because energy can't be created or destroyed, it's, it's going, some of the energy will be imparted to the electron but not enough to, to have it liberated out um, and, and ejected from the metal. If the incident energy is exactly the same, so the energy coming in is exactly the same as this energy 
required to lift it out of the well, then the electron will just become, a, become liberated. Um, it will have no extra energy left over. It will just be sort of floating near the, near the metal surface. Um, and the final, the final case is that if the incident energy is greater than the energy required, so the incident radiation coming in is greater, then it will use some of that, some of that energy will uh, be required to move it out of its potential well, this potential, uh, you know, like a potential um, uh, attachment to the metal. Um, but then the leftover energy, the rest of that energy, um, will be imparted to the electron, will be given to the electron, and the electron will be ejected with some kinetic energy. It will have some um, velocity, some kinetic energy as it leaves the metal, as it leaves the metal. So the surplus energy, that's the energy left over from the incident radiation coming in, is transferred, it's given to the photoelectron. Um, the photoelectron, once again, just an electron that is ejected through this effect, the photoelectric effect, as kinetic energy. So it's given to the electron as kinetic energy. The energy required to liberate the photoelectron, the energy required to lift it out of that potential well, uh, is called the work function. Now, this, this, it'll, it's given the letter W, uh, just the same as work, um, but work function specifically pertains to the photoelectric effect. Um, it's uh, like a lot of things in physics, it's about context. So the letter W in the context of the photoelectric effect refers to the work function of a metal. The work function of a metal is a property of that specific metal. So different different metals, platinum, sodium, uh, magnesium, all have different work functions, just like they have different densities, they have different electronegativities, they have different properties. The work function is just another property of a metal. Here we can see this is, a, this is an... Uh, a mathematical way, an algebraic way of stating that we get the surplus energy goes to the kinetic energy of the electron. So here the maximum kinetic energy of the electron is equal to the energy of the incident radiation, so the energy that's coming in, minus the work function. So it's the difference between, of, between the work function and the energy that's coming in. And that's because it's the energy that's left over from that interaction. It's the energy um, that's left over from the interaction of the incident radiation with the, with the metal, with the work function of the metal. So through Planck's equation, E equals HF, and the incident energy is related to the frequency the frequency of that uh, energy of that photon. So the frequency of the photon multiplied by Planck's constant will be the amount of energy that's coming in. Similarly, the work function can be represented as part of, as uh, in relation to Planck's constant as well. So uh, Planck's constant times this, the F, F0 here is called the threshold frequency. That's the minimum frequency required to just liberate the electron. Uh, so that's when the energy coming in is equal to the energy required. So if that is the same value as the work function, the kinetic maximum kinetic energy will be zero. So at that point, uh, when, w, when, when EI equals W, that will be the threshold frequency. That's the minimum frequency required to release an electron via the photoelectric effect. Now, why is the, the kinetic energy max? Well, if, if we think about how an, an electron might be liberated from a metal, it could collide with other electrons, it could, it could collide with other, um, other particles in its environment. It could be attracted via uh, electric um, or gravitational means. Um, it, can, it could be affected by all of these different things. Um, so this is the very maximum. Um, most of the of the electrons won't be um, operating or, or won't be given this or won't have this kinetic energy as they leave the metal because some of that energy will be lost to its surroundings. So this is the maximum kinetic energy that can be seen from these ejected photoelectrons.
Finally, one example, if we've got a sodium surface, a sodium surface has a work function of 2.46 electron volts. So that's the minimum amount of energy that's needed to liberate an electron from the surface of sodium. It's illuminated, uh, lit up with light of wavelength 300 nanometers. So we need to find the maximum kinetic energy of the ejected photoelectrons and also find the threshold wavelength for sodium. The threshold wavelength is going to be the maximum wavelength that uh, will allow for the release of electrons. Any smaller wavelength than that will have a higher frequency and a higher energy. So uh, this will be the maximum wavelength, the threshold wavelength. So we have a look, this is our photoelectric equation here. Um, so the maximum kinetic energy is going to be the uh, incident energy minus, minus away the uh, work function. Uh, so it's the difference between those two. So we can substitute in here C equals uh, lambda, uh, sorry, C equals F lambda. Here we can substitute in for F because we don't, we don't have F, we've got uh, the frequency, we've got the wavelength. Uh, so HC on lambda, we can substitute the values in here. This is the um, electron volt seconds value for Planck's constant here, multiplied by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, divided by the wavelength here, 300 times 10 to the negative 9 metres, subtracting away the work function for sodium. And we see that the maximum kinetic energy that these electrons can have is 1.68 electron volts. Now to find the threshold wavelength for sodium, um, the, wave, the, uh, uh, yep, the work function of sodium is going to be H times the threshold frequency. Substituting in C divided by lambda for, for our frequency there, the uh, threshold wavelength is going to be able to be calculated here. All we've done is uh, multiplied both sides by, uh, the, by the, the threshold wavelength to cancel the wavelength at the bottom and divided both sides by the work function here. So we've got the wavelength, uh, the threshold wavelength is equal to HC on W. Substituting in the electron volt seconds value for Planck's constant here, multiplied by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, divided by the work function for sodium, 2.46 electron volts, and we see that the uh, threshold wavelength for sodium is 504 nanometers. The significance of this value here, anything greater than this value, there won't, or, or equal to, the, uh, no, anything greater than this value, there aren't going to be any photoelectrons ejected. The, the energy the, of the incoming light will be too low um, with a greater wavelength than this. However, if the wavelength is less, less than this, we uh, will start seeing electrons ejected from the, the sodium surface. So less and, uh, and getting less and less of a wavelength, a lower and lower wavelength of incident light will give off more and more energetic electrons, electrons with more and more kinetic energy.